There's no denying it. Greater Hazelton's changing population has brought everything from language barriers to crime from outside elements. But members of the new and old community are trying to change that. Today's meeting on bridging barriers, our top story on News 13 at 4.30. From the Samsung Production Studios in the heart of Hazelton, Pennsylvania, it's your News 13. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Kathy Bazinski. Well, let's face it, the Hispanic community in Greater Hazelton has grown and so has the barrier between new immigrants and police. But as Stephanie Gorney found out, some police officers from outside the city have come to help break down that barrier. Crime is a growing issue in communities all across the country. Some of these cities and towns have a harder time taking control of the crime due to a lack of connection between the residents and the law enforcement. Hazelton has seen an increase in the Latino community within the past several years and with that increase also brought the increase of a language barrier. Hazelton city officials met with police officers from New Jersey as well as from Washington DC Friday afternoon to discuss ways of breaking this barrier. We, um, we help the, the community uh, get involved with the police, understand the police and also the police to understand the community because there's that language barrier and there's other barriers too that have to be uh, understood so the, the things can get done and there could be a relationship between the police or, or the authority and the community. These police officers have helped their cities become more integrated and this has allowed everyone to grow together. That's the only way that as a community uh, the town of Hazelton is going to be able to grow and grow uh, immensely, positively and uh, to give us an example to other uh, towns, small towns, uh, the same remedy in order to get together and, you know, set up those goals and be able to achieve them. Diaz and Medina know firsthand that the community works more thoroughly when connections are made between the authority and the Latino residents. The trust, mm -hmm. the relationship, uh, working together, uh, getting mixed up different uh, cultural backgrounds, uh, we get to know each other better, and by doing that, we're going to be able to uh, have a better relationship, trust each other, work like a community should be working, you know, integrated. Stephanie Gorney, News 13, Hazelton. It's a disturbing story. The Luzerne County District Attorney's Office has released a sketch of a man who police say sexually assaulted a victim in Forty Fort after entering a home pretending to be a utility worker. Investigators say the man apparently targeted that victim and knocked on the door of her home in Forty Fort back in January, saying he was a gas company employee and a neighbor had called to report a gas leak at the home. The woman, of course, let him in and then he sexually assaulted her. Investigators say the alleged rapist is a white man with short hair between five feet ten to six feet tall. He weighed between 185 and 200 pounds and was wearing a red hat, a red long sleeve shirt and black pants. Anybody with information on that assault has to call 40 Fort Police at 287-8586. The McAdoo man who was convicted of harassing Sarah Palin's Alaska lawyers has been sentenced to two years in prison for a probation violation. Judge in Anchorage gave 21-year-old Sean Christie credit for time served, so he'll only have to serve another year. His sentence also included one year supervised release on a guilty plea of running from federal authorities here in PA. Christie was arrested in November for leaving a community reentry facility before completing his term. Christie was sentenced to five years probation after he and his father pleaded guilty to making harassing phone calls to Palin's attorney. The Christies were accused of threatening both the former Alaska governor and her attorneys. Well, do you know what you're eating for dinner yet? Well, a recent study may change your plans. People's healthy choices in Luzerne County are way below the state average. Christina Papa with the lowdown on why our region is so unhealthy. Sodium, aluminum, phosphorate, sodium acid, glycerin. It's ingredients unknown from Michelle Feely, a mother from Hazleton, who wasn't about to buy that box of donuts for her young daughter. In, in today's economy, everything is going up, paychecks are going less, and everybody's trying to compromise and make do with what they can and what they can afford. So it depends on your family life, you know, your financial situation. Michelle brought her grocery list with her to Boyer's Market in Hazleton today. There's only one problem. She's trying to feed her family healthy foods on a budget. I try to buy healthy um, because I have a daughter. I try to buy anything if I can, low fat. 
Um, not a lot of cholesterol, fruits, vegetables. Not everyone is buying healthy. That's why this year's county health rankings issued by Robert Wood Johnson Foundation ranked Luzerne County 57th among PA's 67 counties in healthy lifestyle. Steve Sidlowski is the executive director of Healthy PA Initiative, which recently conducted their own tests on how to identify health needs in our area. He says adults in Luzerne County aren't living healthy lifestyles by smoking, drinking, and not exercising. However, the area's low income doesn't help either. Income levels of many of the, the population is, is, you know, at poverty or near poverty, um, which contribute, uh, as you'll see in the study, uh, to some of the health issues that we're dealing with. And in just the cereal aisle alone, there are dozens of brands to pick from. That's why some people say they don't even look at the ingredients. They pick their products based on the pictures on the box. I figure one of these days I won't be able to eat them, so I'm going to enjoy what I can now. Do you buy with your eyes? If it looks good, oh, let's buy it. And then maybe you look to read it after. Christy Book is a personal trainer in Wilkesbury. She says eating the right foods is only the first step to becoming healthy. A lot of medical conditions like osteoporosis and breast cancer can be prevented by daily exercise. And finding the time to break a sweat is easier than you think. Park further away from the front door, from a grocery store and walk. Um, just walking in general, just basic things that help you with everyday activities. As for Michelle, she plans to stock her shelves with some healthier options. Christina Papa, News 13, Hazleton. Some good advice there. Coming up on News 13, we've gotten used to a few flakes every day, but will we see some real snow? We'll tell you in News 13 weather. But first, it takes Guitar Hero one better, and we'll take it to a place in Hazleton where everybody can be one for real. Just ahead on News 13. And let's check the winning midday lottery numbers. Good luck if you played. The daily number for today was 082. The Big Four, 9850. Quinto, 96867. And The Treasure Hunt, 5813-2528. Hope you won. Good evening, everyone, and here's tonight's social news. First tonight, happy birthday to Patrick Reno of Beaver Meadows. This wish comes with love from your family and friends. Also tonight, happy birthday, John Suda of Hazleton. This wish comes with love from your family and friends. And in tonight's Talk of the Town report, the Valley Regional Girls Softball League and its Valley Regional Warriors Travel Organization is seeking an experienced coach to guide its 12U team for the 2014 season. Interested candidates must provide references and background check documentation. Contact 570-401-4344 for more information. At tonight's Talk of the Town. News 13 would like to send sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. Suzanne M. McGarry of Hazel Township. Private service will be held from the Hazel Chapel of the Crop and Hughes Funeral Home. Raymond A. Tiglio of Freeland. Services will be held at the convenience of the family from the McHugh Wilczek Funeral Home. Mary Louise Brennan of Hazelton. Services were held under the direction of the Joseph P. Conahan Funeral Home. Daniel M. Dulcie of Roaring Brook Township. Mass is Saturday at 11 a.m. in the St. Eulalia's Church. Friends may call Saturday from 10 to 11 a.m. Arrangements are by the Brian Arthur Strouch Funeral Homes. Helen Avancho of Freeland. Funeral is Monday at 11.30 a.m. from the Frank J. Bonin Funeral Home. Friends may call Sunday from 5 to 8 p.m. And William Fagley of Quaygate. Funeral is Monday at 7 p.m. in the Christ UCC Church in Tamaqua. Friends may call from 5 to 7 p.m. in the church. Tonight's obituaries have been brought to you by the Smilax Floral Shop located on 15th Street in Hazleton. Free delivery to all local funeral homes. And palm crosses are now on sale by calling 570-454-0111. And by Mia's. Once again, the Hazleton area's number one rated restaurant. Call 570-501-3410 for information on luncheon packages. If you go out tonight to listen to some good music, I'll guarantee you'll see somebody playing a legendary Fender guitar. But as Christina Pompa tells us, a Hazleton music store is now the only place you can buy a new one in Luzerne County. Porta Nova's music store in Hazleton is hitting all the right chords with the newest addition to their shop. After our three-year uh, stint so far, and uh, it's kind of a positive feeling, you know, something to give back to the community and 
The shop's owner, Jesse Portanova, is talking about the legendary Fender guitar. Jesse says the well-known company is very particular about who sells their instruments. That's why Portanova says he is honored to be the only music store in Luzerne County selling the one-of-a-kind instruments. They don't give it to the dealership to just anybody. And Fender's been around since 1946, and they're one of the top brands of guitars. Everybody from the Beatles to Blink-182 plays something from Fender. It took three years to get the specialty-made guitars on his shelves, but Jesse says it was well worth the wait. Now he'll be able to sell and repair them right from his shop. We're the only Fender repair center in basically the tri-state area. And don't worry if you're just a beginner, Porto Novas has professionals right here in the studio to give you one-on-one -on -one lessons. All our, all, all our instructors are professional musicians by trade, mm -hmm. and they have collectively over 30 years experience. And if you're not into jamming out on the electric guitar, Jesse says Fender will have the right instrument for you. Whether you play acoustic, electric, uh, bluegrass, we do mandolins, we do banjos, we do all of that fun stuff. They have every color, style, and uh, sound you're looking for. Jesse says they have at least 50 guitars available for sale today. Christina Papa, News 13, Hazleton. And time now for our regional weather from the National Weather Service. Checking the radar, same as it's been. Flurry activity keeps on coming through, though no significant accumulations for right now. A creative condition, a downtown cityscape. It's by Kevin Vargas, a fourth grader at West Hazleton Elementary Middle School, and he says it's a windy day, and down on the street, a man's hat has been blown off, but up on the rooftop, somebody's flying a kite. Now let's take a look at News 13 weather from the National Weather Service for Greater Hazleton. Tonight, scattered flurries through the evening, then partly cloudy with a low around 20. Saturday Day, mostly sunny with a high near 36. Nighttime low around 19. Sunday, mostly sunny with a high near 37. A 50% chance of late evening snow with a low around 26. For Monday, chance of snow continues with a high near 33, then trailing off to evening snow showers with a low of 24. Tuesday, mostly sunny with a high near 36. On to Schuylkill County, tonight partly cloudy with a low around 20. Then on Saturday, sunny with a high near 38. Low at night though, down to 22. For Sunday, mostly sunny with a high near 39. 50% chance of snow at night with a low down to 28. Monday, a 60% chance of snow likely in the afternoon, then changing to rain and snow with a high of 35. Rain and snow showers continuing into the overnight with a low around 25. And for Tuesday, mostly sunny with a high bouncing up to 40 degrees. And still ahead on News 13, the spring sports schedule trying to kick off, but the weather won't cooperate. Fred Barletta with the warm-ups in News 13 sports. And then our Friday dose of cute and cuddly. We'll check out the lovable animals available for adoption coming up when News 13 continues. SSP TV Sports on News 13 with Fred Barletta Jr. Well, there's good news, there's bad news as we uh, get things ready for this Friday deep in the month of March. The good news is you got the PIAA State Basketball Championships, more on that in a minute. Of course, the NCAA tournament. The bad news is this is the first official day of spring sports. How bad is that? This is where the PIAA just, uh, sometimes you get lucky, but most years you don't, and it is downright nasty, and so most things are off. There is one exception, though. While everybody's worried about the frigid temperatures, Ah, the spring sport of boys volleyball is not. And that is going to go off today without a hitch. We uh, know that Chris Falabella, head coach of the Cougars, he hasn't had the weather worries that all the other coaches have. In fact, he thinks his team is getting ready. They've had an advantage. They've had an awfully big turnout. And our Mike Madry checked in with Coach Falabella and the Cougar boys, and he tells us what to expect in this 2013 season. The Hazleton volleyball team will enter the 2013 season looking strong. The hype around the program is tangible, and even Coach Volibel agrees. We've had our biggest turnout. We had close to uh, 35 guys try out this year. Unfortunately, uh, we had to make cuts, which I don't like to do, but uh, it does attest to the fact that we have more people coming out. And as they did come out, we actually picked up about four or five guys that are really going to contribute this year. Hazleton knows this season they have to start off strong to maintain momentum in a league that's very tight. 
Unfortunately, we, we lost a couple teams this year. Hopefully it's just a one-year lull and we'll get them back. Uh, otherwise, we're going to have to start looking for some games in, in other places. But uh, the teams that are there, be quality games, it'll be good tests for us. The way the league is set up, Hazleton will have to travel for districts. And for a coach Fallabell, he doesn't want this to distract his players. They're no joke down there, but uh, these guys definitely have a little bit of a little bit of attitude behind them. They're always willing and eager to play, and that's what I love about it. They don't fear anybody. Hazelton Boys Volleyball Club is confident they have the winning ingredient. Coach Volleyball says that that may be true, but at the end of the day, it rests on his shoulders. I, would without a doubt, think that we have a winning program. That's never a question in my mind right now. I think that we have the capabilities to have a winning team. I think that we have the capabilities to be a competitive team. But how competitive and how winning of a program we're going to be is just basically rests on me. Hazleton's first game will be played tomorrow at the McGim Gymnasium. The Cougars are lucky to have a roof over their head because it's the only reason they're playing in this cold ending of March. Mike Madry, News 13, Hazleton. Yeah, I would bet even from Mike's point of view, it's a lot better covering the volleyball indoors than all the other sports outdoors. Incidentally, they uh, are just underway. They started the JV contest. Today they're playing Pottsville. That one uh, is a 4.30 JV start, and then the varsity will start somewhere around 5.30. So there actually is some sports today where you don't have to worry about the weather, and that is certainly a good thing. Now. It was supposed to be track and field down at Pottsville. That is not happening. That is off. That's a TBA. Now, indoors it'll be for the state championships. Here's the rundown for you. We start with uh, the Quad A boys. It's Chester Lower Marion. And in Triple A boys, it's Charter School of Hotep against Archbishop Carroll. Double A boys, Holy Cross out of Scranton against Beaver Falls. In the uh, single A, Box and Johnsonburg, that single A game. Uh, being played right now, as a matter of fact. Quad A girls, this will be later on tonight, Spring Ford and Cumberland Valley, and you got Bethlehem Catholic and South Park on Saturday, all these games at the Hershey Arena. And in Double A girls, York Catholic and Bishop Canavan, that one uh, today in Tri-Valley and Vincentian Academy, Tri-Valley out of District 11 in the Schuylkill League, that'll be tomorrow. Told you, let's keep an eye on VCU. Well, Virginia Commonwealth, easy work. They just put Akron away early, so they advance. They will play Michigan. That'll be Saturday, a little afternoon again. Mike Rhodes, assistant coach there for Virginia Commonwealth. Say Mike Rhodes, it was a standout at Mahanoy area. End of the week, and uh, well, you know what that means. You gotta head up to bottlenecks. It's the all night happy hour. They got half price apps and drink specials from open to close, and that includes the huge imported beer selection, pool dart shuffleboard, kitchen open until midnight. And they got those 14 flat screen TVs. Get up and you're gonna watch the games tonight up at bottlenecks. They sponsor us right here on SSB TV. And we are back here at the Hazelton Animal Shelter for this week's Adopt Me. And today we have a fluffy little guy named Noodle. That's correct. Uh, Noodle is a poodle. <laughs> he is a uh, young adult, maybe two years old at the most. He's already neutered and tested negative for Lyme and heartworm and is also current on his vaccinations. Um, he's very, uh, we, we did have him groomed, so he looks perfect now. He looks like a little show dog. Um, he has a lot of energy. He's very playful and affectionate. He like, likes to be outdoors. He seems very well house trained. I never want to guarantee that a dog is house trained, but as you noticed, uh, he basically held everything in until he got outside here, and that was, was sort of his first, first thought. So he's a very uh, wonderful and friendly uh, little guy, probably great for any household, although we have not seen him uh, firsthand with cats. Oh, okay. Do you think he would be good maybe with other dogs, or...? Yes, he's a uh, good enough size that he wouldn't be a threat. It wouldn't be harmed to anyone else's dog, obviously. And uh, he seems to do well with other dogs. We've had him around a few others, and he's always been very fl uh, friendly and very playful. And he, as you said, he is energetic. So maybe somebody who maybe not likes to sit inside all day, but who likes to go for walks and jogs and have him out. That's true. He looks very pampered. He looks very much like a lap dog, and he's, I'm sure he's more than willing to be. But he also has a lot of uh, spunk and a lot of energy, and he'd make a great uh, camping or walking, great outdoors dog as well. And there's Noodles. Now let's head on into the cat colony. 
Okay, and now here we are in the cat colony with two sisters who are just so affectionate, Chris. That's right, a little Kachina and Camaria, or Camaria, I'm not sure, quite sure how we're saying that. Uh, these little sisters are both about six months old. They're spayed, and they are uh, all purrs from the second you uh, go towards their cage. Getting a little bit restless and fidgety now, but um, one thing about these two is they absolutely adore each other. They uh, tend to stay by each other's sides. They've been together since birth. Um, we'll, we'll not require that they leave together, but it would be great to see that they either go with each other or that each one goes to a household that has uh, other cats already, because they do love other cats. Um, they're both spayed, uh, current on their vaccinations, and of course tested negative for feline leukemia and FIV. Um, they're both, both domestic short hairs. And it's funny, they, you'll notice they actually tend to walk side by side. They even uh, put their tails together as if they're holding hands. So they're both very playful, very affectionate kittens, and um, they'd be great probably for any home. And as I said, especially with uh, other, other cats, they do love other animals. Yeah, they seem to love the company of each other, so I, it, it would be great to see them go together. Absolutely. These two are very social. Many uh, cats can be solitary animals, but these two are definitely very social. Okay, and if you guys at home are interested in the sisters or Noodle the Poodle, stop on down at the Hazeltine Animal Shelter at 101 North Poplar Street. And for this week's Adopt Me, I'm Stephanie Gorney. Today's Adopt Me segment is brought to you by Brook Hill Animal Hospital, located at Brook Hill Square, Northeast in Cunningham. Brook Hill Animal Hospital helps our pets live healthier, happier lives. Call 788-3700 or visit at www.brookhillanimalhospital.com. And that's News 13 for your Friday. Thank you so much for joining us. You can catch this newscast again with rebroadcast throughout tonight or just go to News 13's website any old time, ssptv.com, where you'll always find the local and regional news you need and the community news you want. For the entire News 13 team, thank you so much for joining us. I'm Kathy Bozinski. Have a great weekend.